and good afternoon. I am doing another video and yes, this is me. Warts and all. Well, not warts, but skin blemishes, so to speak. Um, recently on the news, they have been talking about celebrities that have gone viral who are talking about having stow bags or colostomy bags. Now, I don't know why all of a sudden this has become the new fad for celebrities to be like, oh, yes, you know, what? I've got a colostomy bag and I still do my job and blah, blah, blah. And let's take photographs and you can still be sexy even though you shit in a bag because your bowels no longer work. Well, <laughs> thank you for doing that. That is fantastic that that is happening. But at the same time, this has been an ongoing issue for ever since mankind, probably. Um, and since, obviously, the scientists and the world-renowned doctors and everything were able to experiment on people and do clinical trials, as they would have called them, to help people with um, problems with their bowel system. And one of the things that obviously has been highlighted with this whole fad of all of these celebrities talking about how I've got a colostomy bag, you know, but I still do my job. But a lot of the things that people are worry about when they've got one of these is obviously the lack of public toilets or the lack of facilities. And again, that's nothing new. Everywhere at the moment, it doesn't matter which town you go to, it doesn't matter what village you go to, it doesn't matter what city you go to. In the United Kingdom, I can't talk about abroad because I haven't been abroad in over 10 years, has not got these facilities. And one of the things that I did a couple of weeks back was I downloaded these apps that were supposed to support people in knowing where toilet facilities were. And the first thing I did was what anyone would do is, OK, I live in Nuneaton. Nuneaton is in Warwickshire. It's the heart of England. People might not know where it is. It's near Coventry. Okay, yeah, that got bombed during the war. It still doesn't look any better, but that's a different story. And all of the places that were listed in Nuneaton as being public toilets or having use for people to use facilities, hardly any of them exist anymore, yet they're still on this app. The only toilet facilities in my hometown that are accessible are Asda, Sainsbury's, if they're in use. The bus station, if that is in use. The rope warp toilets, if you can get up a flight of stairs or use a lift or use an escalator, and they're in use. And then anywhere else, you're looking at going into an establishment, like an eatery establishment. And believe me, there are a lot of those now in town. But most of them close at four. So after five o'clock, nobody goes to Nuneaton. I don't. I try to avoid Nuneaton like the plague after five. Because after five, sorry, I'm just, I keep looking at my face and I try not to be very vain and have vanity, but it's just such a flare up again. And it's one of the things that I do worry about. And I'm more than happy to talk about that in another video. And um, so basically, you're screwed. <laughs> if you live in Nuneaton and you need to go to the toilet after five o'clock because there isn't anywhere open. Um, there's Asda, but to get to Asda, it's not like a two-minute walk. Um, there aren't even any bushes that you could go to the toilet in anymore. Um, believe me, with my health problem, not that I've ever had to do that in Nuneaton. I've been really, really lucky, and I've never been caught for indecent exposure. But when you've got to go, you've got to go. And although at the moment I am really, really extremely lucky, sorry, so I've got a cramp in my hand, um, to not have to use a stow bag or a colostomy bag at the moment, I am one of the people that are on this program and when it was spoken about in the news, that got left behind. And that is people who suffer with other bowel issues. There are so many things that can go wrong with the human body. And if you have to have a colostomy bag, that means that literally they have tried everything else humanly possible to save your bowels, to make sure you can still use public toilets and not 
have to have intervention and you know and have a have a colostomy bag but I am 40 now and the problem I have to deal with on a daily basis is a problem that's called bile acid malabsorption now personally I think I've always had bile acid malabsorption but when I was 16, it, I got told it was IBS, which was irritable bowel syndrome. And I got told it was my own fault. It was self-inflicted that if I changed my diet, if I changed how much I exercised in a week, if I cut down how many carbs I ate, if I cut down my fats, my sugar. Literally, I tried every bit of advice that was given to me by the doctor whenever I went to the doctor. And I would say, look, you know, I'm not well. There's something wrong with me. It should not be normal for somebody at the age of 16 to have sickness and diarrhea for three days solid out of every single month. And then it was, oh, you know, it could be endometriosis. It could just be um, to do with your menstrual cycle. I was put on so many different medications, so many different types of antibiotics, um, none of them really work for me anymore. I'm 40. I've had so many cocktails of drugs shoved down my throat by the NHS. Um, I mean, people complain about pharmaceutical companies in other countries. But from the age of 16, I was taking cocodamol. I was taking aspirin. I was taking paracetamol. I was taking two different types of antibiotics. I can't even remember what they were now off the top of my head. It's all in my medical records, which it mysteriously disappeared now that I need them for the Department of Work and Pensions. And finally, when I got to my 30s, I did what most women choose to do. I chose to start a family with the guy that I was in a relationship with. And I got gestational diabetes and I was on all of the clinical trials for Nottingham U Nottingham and Warwick University to support women with gestational diabetes during the pregnancies. After my first son was born, I was 30 and I was still sick. And they told me, oh, it's because you just had a baby. And this went on that for about four months and then they decided to do an ultrasound which I'm so glad they did and they went no it's not because you had a baby it's because you've got gallstones in your gallbladder and unlike most women I was very lucky I didn't have to wait too long to have my gallbladder removed so I had my gallbladder removed when I was in my third when I was 30 it was the first of December 20. 24 same year my son was born I'm there in the hospital waiting room I'd been there from seven in the morning did not get operated on until seven in the evening N still breastfeeding still nursing my newborn child who was born in the January um had the operation was told I'd be fine may have to change my diet but there shouldn't be any long-term or long-standing health problems and that I should just be happy that it was a keyhole surgery and that everything went well. And then from there up until 2018, I, touch wood, was health-wise quite happy, quite healthy, found out I was pregnant again, did the maths. It didn't happen whilst I was under. <laughs> Otherwise, I, there would have been a lawsuit. <laughs> I would have been like, who's the father of this child? You know, I've got pregnant just after having a major surgery. Um, what's been going on? But that didn't happen. So that's good. Um, after having my third child in 2018, my health plummeted. It went downhill. Like it was like being on top of a roller coaster and then just literally being thrown off. Or, you know, bungee jumping off some strange bridge in another country I wouldn't recommend doing it in the UK and I was then told oh it's your gallbladder and I was like it can't be my gallbladder because I had it removed in when I was 30 okay um it could be this it could be that and I went to every evasive procedure going 
to see what was wrong with me. And then finally, they did one of the most innovative procedures possible. Basically, they give you this little tablet and it's um, got radiation in it or something. So it, it is quite dangerous. But you don't want to be doing it all the time. You swallow it. They, no, first of all, they take a scan of your body and you swallow it. Then they take another scan. Take them back in a week. Take another. And from doing that procedure, sorry, I got a crap in my arm again. They found out I have a condition called bile acid malabsorption. Now, they basically told me that the reason I have bile acid malabsorption is because I had my gallbladder removed. And they told me the symptoms of bile acid malabsorption. They told me how it can affect you on a daily basis. There is no cure. There's prevention, treatment, but no cure. And when I was given the facts of what bile acid malabsorption was, I knew straight away that that was absolute bull. I knew that from the age of 16 that that is what was wrong with me. One of the key reasons I strongly believe that I've been suffering from bile acid malabsorption from the age of 16 and not in my 30s after having my gallbladder removed was because one of the symptoms of having bile acid malabsorption is that your feces when you go to the toilet is yellow. And that is a sign of bile acid malabsorption or that there is an infection in your body somewhere that hasn't been found. And I know for a fact that with myself, since being formally diagnosed with bile acid malabsorption, I've done as much clinical research as I can on it. And it's what they call bile acid malabsorption or bile acid diarrhea. And for me, I know that when, not always, but most of the time, I know whether I'm going to have a good day or a bad day. So I will literally post online, I am having a bad day, which means B, B, A, D, day, which means vile acid diarrhea. Now, today, I was literally on the phone trying to liaison with my ex-partner as to whether he was having my child tonight. We still share responsibility for our children. And I said to him, right, I'm going to have to end the call. I need to go to the toilet. And before I could even hang up the phone, I'd shit myself. And one of the only things that I can do, because I have bile acid malabsorption, is wear incontinence underwear and take a cocktail of different medication that you can get over the counter I can get this medication over the counter anywhere in the country. And because of that, a lot of that is one of the main reasons why people struggle to get PIP if they have this medical condition. Because they'll say, oh, you're only taking paracetamol. Oh, you're only taking um, Imodium to stop you from having constant diarrhea. Oh, you're only taking Briscopan. Oh, you're only taking Leperamide. Um, and all of those things are readily available over the counter. But if you read the instructions on all of that medication, it will clearly and concisely say, please do not exceed this medication for more than three days. If you are having to take this medication for more than three days, please consult your GP or seek medical attention. Well, I've been taking a leperamide since I was 16. One of the main things I used to do in order to go to school when I was 16 years old well even before I was 16 actually once my menstrual cycle started sorry that child's getting a bit head a bit heavy on my head my parents did the best they could like any parents my mom and dad so that I could go to school when I started my menstrual cycle which only got worse when I left and as I got older would give me a dessert spoon of kaolin and morphine which is basically concrete cement, which you could get out from the chemist. And every month I would wake up in the morning or wake up and I would be sick and I would be in pain. And my parents would say to me, you're not having a day off school. This is not a sickness. This is your menstrual cycle. This is about being a woman. Here, take this. So literally from the age of like 15 to I think it was about 20, I took it as being normal that it was okay to take a dessert spoon of kaolin and morphine the first day of my menstrual cycle. 
And I just kept doing it. To me, that wasn't the norm. And the reason I did it was because my parents told me it was safe to do so. Okay, I would never in the month of Sundays tell my kids to do that now. But I was a child. I didn't know any better. And even when I went to see the doctor and he said to me, how are you managing your pain of your menstrual cycle? And I would say to him, oh, I take calcium morphine. Oh, I take codeine. I take this. I take that. He would be like, who's given you this medication? And I'd be like, um, it's at home in the house. I just take it. He wasn't even aware that I was actually stealing medication from my parents in order to function on a daily basis. And how many young people are still at risk of doing things like that today, especially with the waiting time to see a GP? So let's get back on track now. Everyone's been obviously talking about stow bags, incontinence issues, but I think more needs to be done and be highlighted about other digestive problems that people have to live with on a daily basis. People like myself who have to wear these. Now, they are not sexy. They are not comfortable. But they do the job. Okay, they have been a lifesaver for me wearing incontinence underwear. At first, I thought they were only for women who had urinary incontinence. But I obviously do suffer with that on occasions, but mine is bowel incontinence. And even today, yes, it's a mess. It's disgusting to have to clean up after. But they have saved my life. And it is frustrating because I do try to care about the environment. And the last thing I want to be doing at the age of 40 is wearing adult nappies that have to go in a bin and then end up in a landfill. But unfortunately, that is my only choice. So either that or stay at home, don't go anywhere, sit on the toilet, which I do do when I, when I don't need to take my kids to school or have any prior commitments. But I think more needs to be made aware of the, the incontinence issues that people are having. And it's not just people who are, you know, fair, fat and 40 who've had their gallbladders removed. I was 30 when I had mine out. We're talking about people having digestive and health problems in their early 20s nowadays. And a lot of that is due to lifestyle changes. It is due to diet. It is due to the fact that we're constantly in the rat race. A lot of these illnesses and disabilities that people had didn't used to exist. Or if they did, people were not always aware of them. But now, I mean, these things, they just seem to be like the norm. It's like, oh, you know, you've not had your gallbladder out by the time you're 40. There's something wrong with you. It's like, it's supposed to be like bragging rights. And it's like, what? Why would you want to brag about the fact that you've had to have your gallbladder removed? Why would you want people to know that you're having to wear adult nappies because of incontinence in your, your 30s after having a child? There are ways and things out there to prevent these things from happening and to support women and men you know, who are having these health issues. But because it's not talked about enough, this information isn't being provided. The funding isn't there to provide the services that could potentially prevent further and, and ongoing issues where incontinence underwear is needed in the future. I know prevention is better than a cure, but for me, it is so embarrassing and humiliating and debilitating to have to wear incontinence underwear and even the adverts that they show you for incontinence underwear going oh I've got my incontinent pants on I'm gonna go and watch Miley Cyrus wiggle her bum on stage or whoever these people have gone to see in in shows it's like no I wouldn't I would not intentionally go out and wear incontinence underwear and piss and shit myself in public to go and see a, see a show. I wear them because there's no toilet facilities in my hometown that I can get to quickly enough. And I pray that my bus journey home or my taxi home 
that they will support me long enough so that I can literally get the key in the door, unlock the door, run up the stairs and either jump in the bath or jump onto the toilet. And I think it's kind of being too glamorized and too normalized to say, oh, yeah, but it's normal. No, it's not normal. It is not normal for people to have to live with these conditions. Prevention is better than a cure, but I do strongly believe that more information needs to be out there, more research needs to be out there, and people need to start talking about these things and supporting each other. Thank you.